How's it going everybody Chadley here and in today's video we're going to be looking at the buff that the pyromancer received a part of yesterday's patch and specifically that patch targeted the phaser beam skill for pyromancer it is way better than it was before it was already really good in my opinion but now it is probably the single target king for the pyromancer overheat is still going to be your best bet in terms of ad clear but the amount of single target damage you can do is pretty darn insane. Yesterday, I was able to kill Dr. Detonator on Boomtown in just two skill rotations. So that's just Heat Wave, Phaser Beam, and then Overheat. I was able to kill him in two of those rotations, which is pretty darn nutty. So with this video, we're going to be looking exactly what changed with Phaser Beam. And then also, this is going to kind of be an update to our Phaser Beam Overheat build in the same video. So hopefully you guys are excited for that. Also, I'll be live at the time of posting this video. So if you guys want to come see me test some more of these buffs with the other characters, hopefully you see it over on Twitch. And finally, I just want to take a moment to thank the sponsor of today's video, Raid Shadow Legends. Explore millions of champion combinations and master countless tactics as you take on raid bosses, dungeon runs, campaign battles, and PvP arena matches. Make sure you guys use my links below to download Raid for yourself to your mobile phone or PC. To help you guys out find some champions that you may like, I decided to make a list of my top 5 favorite factions in Raid Shadow Legends. Coming in at number 5, we have the Dwarves with a nice blend of attack and defense. Then at number 4, we have the Banner Lords, a group of knights and warriors ready for basically any scenario you have for them. Coming in at number 3, we have the Orcs, which are very attack oriented. Then coming in at number 2, we have the Dark Elves, which are incredibly versatile. You can almost always find a use for a champion from this faction and then finally in our number one spot my favorite faction in all of raid shadow legends is the knight revenant this faction has some of the most badass and best champions i have seen so what's new in raid raid has a jam-packed schedule of events to kick off the summer as well as a load of new content and big surprise, they have new champions coming out to help you guys with the new rotation of Doom Tower. Raid always has a lot going on and this month is no different, so don't wait around and don't miss out. If you want to get a huge head start in Raid, all you got to do is hit the link in the description or scan my QR code and you'll get the Epic Hero Konoru, 200k silver, 1 XP boost, 1 energy refill, and 1 Ancient Shard. That way you can summon an awesome champion as soon as you get in game. All this treasure will be waiting for you guys right here so make sure you do not miss out and once again thank you to raid for sponsoring today's video now let's go ahead and jump into phaser beam and exactly what changed with it so taking a look at phaser beam here what changed yesterday with it was its base damage was increased by a hundred percent and then also the benefit it gains from your status power was increased up to 210 percent of your status power which is insane so if you guys have not been running status power with phaser beam already you definitely need to now because it's really going to increase the amount of damage you can do i know there's nothing you can really do for a couple of the akari pieces but then if they ever make it so legendary pieces can have random attributes phaser beam can get even more nutty than it is right now as we can see my base damage for phaser beam with this current setup is 520,000, which is pretty darn high with this setup, I can consistently hit around three to four mil. And then with the build video that I'm actually gonna be releasing tomorrow, we're gonna be hitting 10 plus million damage and it's nuts for single target damage. And also in co-op, you guys are going to be having no trouble at all. Phaser Beam actually works very well in co-op. There's still going to be pretty much no enemies except for really big elites that are gonna survive your Phaser Beams which is fantastic. So with Phaser Beam, you guys are gonna be wanting to use a weapon that has status power on it. So I really like the Roaring Umbra for this because it has Kinetic Stomp for just that extra damage from your weapon mod. And then I chuck Fortress on there because obviously that is just a boost to everything that we're doing. And then just make sure you are maxing out the shard attribute things. That's gonna help you out a ton. It's gonna add a lot more status power and in turn damage to your Phaser Beam. Then otherwise, going through the mods on my gear, on the Akari Helmet, I'm using Fire Tsunami and Burnt Out. On the chest piece, I have Detonator and Master Consumer for Overheat. And then on the pants, I keep Anomaly Echo on there and then throw on Captain Hunter. And then for the gloves, I'm running Pure Power to increase the base damage of Phaser Beam even more. And then Ride the Wave, so we have that extra Heat Wave for more Akari stacks. And then also for an extra debuff with Burnt Out. And then finally on the boots, I'm using Size Matters. I think that's incredibly important for Phaser Beam. Otherwise, its cone is pretty small and it's pretty hard to hit a lot of enemies with it. This helps out a ton with ad clear and also just making sure you don't miss your targets. And then finally, the tier three mod Ashen Champion. This is gonna help you guys boost your anomaly power even more. So 
those big elites that do happen to survive a single phaser beam, your overheat is going to either kill them or get them a huge chunk further down their health. With all of these mods and everything, I've hit close to a million anomaly power, which is pretty darn nasty, and it's gonna help you guys deal so much extra damage. And then otherwise the skill tree that i use for this is just a bottom tree and then i grab some cooldown here in the middle tree tomorrow's build video is actually gonna have a little bit of a different skill tree so stay on the lookout for that but now finally let's just go ahead and see how much damage phaser beam is actually capable of putting out now that you guys know my exact setup so we're gonna test it here on this juggernaut captain so i'm just gonna do both my heat waves and then go right into the phaser beam and as you can see He's just gone. That was actually a pretty low damage phaser beam. That was just shy of 2 million damage. But in solo, that really just doesn't matter. As he obviously saw, he was instantly nuked. And I'm serious. This is kind of the case with all the elites in the game. They really don't kind of stand a chance against phaser beam anymore, which is so nice considering I, I've always believed that skills should be doing more damage than the guns, considering they're all on cooldowns. They take time to cast. good to know that we're still getting one shot all the time but yeah the skills should for sure be doing more damage and it's just really nice to see that that is starting to be the case and i really do think these buffs are going to continue this trend for a lot of the different characters but otherwise phaser beam i think is just in such a good spot right now i'm not kidding when i say yesterday's balance patch was so good for all the different characters the other characters didn't get quite this level of strength on their buffs but they're still good nonetheless it definitely does the job at least in solos for the different characters but phaser beam like i said in co-op still just absolutely destroys so if you guys do play co-op a lot i would definitely give it a go you guys are gonna have absolutely no issues whatsoever and you're honestly going to be out damaging most of your other friends especially even your technomancer friends you can seriously out damage them pretty easily the only way they really still out damage you is when they're getting kills from like a distance and you can't really get your skills on the enemies but otherwise you're gonna have a really good time in co-op right here to show it on this captain again right here we're gonna go ahead and do our heat waves and just you can see the entire map is just nuked we did almost four million damage on somebody in that mess and it's just so refreshing to see i cannot stress that enough with these skills and right here both elites are just going to disappear oh that guy had one hp but you get the drift yeah if you guys are not using phaser beam i highly recommend you give it a go now it is just so powerful and it's honestly the most fun skill for the pyromancer in my opinion at the moment for me I'm really excited to see what they do in future buffs because I really do think this is just the tip of the iceberg. I do think they're gonna make some really good choices this month. And another really good sign about this patch from the other day is nothing broke. There is no side effects from yesterday's patch, which is fantastic to see. Because honestly, that's been the thing plaguing this game the most is they go to make changes for the better and it has some ripple effect that makes things so much worse. And it's been really awful to see, but it's good to see that they're finally getting that under control. Once again, keep on the lookout for tomorrow's build video with Phaser Beam, and you guys are going to be hitting 10 to 15 million damage with ease. It is pretty darn fun. If you guys did enjoy this video, make sure you leave a thumbs up on it to let me know. It really does help me out. Also, consider subscribing for more Outriders content. Once again, hopefully I'll see you over on Twitch, but if not, I hope you all have a fantastic day. I'll catch you in tomorrow's video. See ya.